the road is one of the transport media has contributed to the industrial revolution of the human race. Without roads, no meaningful commerce can happen effectively, and therefore the development curve would have been impacted too and maybe the global market as we know it today would at this time be still primitive and inefficient. The earliest roads were built by the Romans. The ancient Romans were famous builders. They left behind them many bridges, canals, stone-paved roads and other engineering masterpieces all throughout the Roman Empire. The vast Roman Empire boasted a very large and extensive network of roads. It is estimated that the roads in the network were more than 400,000 kilometers long, and that over 80,500 kilometers out of those were stone-paved. Global Patterns of Current and Future Road Infrastructure Infrastructure development is one of the metrics used by the UNDP to generally measure development of a place location, county, district or the country. Development of roads in an area almost certainly signals economic empowerment. The road system in developed countries is well planned, advanced and articulate to include cycling lanes, pedestrian pathways and BRTs. A look at the map, the global pattern of the current road infrastructure is mostly dense in Europe, America, China and India. There is still a lot of development that needs to go on the road infrastructure in Africa to catalyze the economic growth of the region. This video seeks to educate and avail vital information for the viewer on how roads are conceptualized, designed and constructed however as a disclaimer the explanations here are not a professional advice. Professional services on road construction should be sought from licensed highway professional engineers. The road construction process. The construction of a road is a complex process that is undertaken by a team of professionals including infrastructure planners, highway engineer, geotechnical engineers, project managers, road contractors etc. All these parties have to work collectively to successfully construct a road. 1. Road planning This is done by urban road planners who model cities and have critical insights on the road transport trends i.e. corridors that needs to be decongested, interconnection of upcoming and existing technopolis, real estate, hospitals, schools, churches etc. During the planning stage of the road, the first step is to identify the route which the road would take. This is referred to as the road alignment. There are many factors that goes into consideration to settle on a certain alignment, first being economy, it should be the shortest route possible, second it should cause minimal displacement in terms of land used by the public, third the geography of the route should be suitable i.e., preferably no valleys, hills, water bodies to cross, fourth this is an intricate process that takes time. A branch of surveying called photogrammetry is the process through which engineers map out locations for the best route alignment for an upcoming road. The peak of planning is having the following data that would be forwarded to the design engineer. The topographical map of a route alignment, the geotechnical survey report of the ground along the route alignment, the traffic survey report of the existing adjoining roads along the route alignment, and the hydrological report of the region where the road is going to be built. I.e., road design The modern road design process is guided by road design manuals which have been developed over time based on the different systems of the road technology. The American system Ashto has intricate slash slight differences in specifications compared to the European country's system of road design. The fundamental variations are on the specifications used for the road geometry, material property for road construction, testing of the road material etc. The design of a road is done by highway engineers or road design engineers and involves the following fundamental elements. Road alignment This is the route that the snakes its way on the ground. This is further divided into vertical alignment and horizontal alignment. Horizontal alignment. Horizontal alignment in road design consists of straight sections of road, known as tangents, connected by circular horizontal curves. Circular curves are defined by radius, tightness, and deflection angle, extent. The design of a horizontal curve entails the determination of a minimum radius, based on speed limit, curve length, and objects obstructing the view of the driver. Using Ashto standards, an engineer works to design a road that is safe and comfortable. If a horizontal curve has a high speed and a small radius, an increased superelevation bank is needed in order to assure safety. If there is an object obstructing the view around a corner or curve, the engineer must work to ensure that drivers can see far enough to stop to avoid an accident or accelerate to join traffic. Vertical alignment. The vertical alignment of a highway generally is defined as the presence of heights and depths in the vertical axis along a roadway. These heights and depths in roads may be in the form of gradients, straight lines in a vertical plane, or vertical curves. The elevation of these roadway points is usually determined by the need to provide an acceptable level of driver safety, driver comfort, cut to full and proper drainage. The typical road cross-section. 
The cross-section of a roadway can be considered a representation of what one would see if an excavator dug a trench across a roadway, showing the number of lanes, their widths and cross slopes, as well as the presence or absence of shoulders, curbs, sidewalks, drains, ditches, and other roadway features. The cross-sectional shape of a road surface, in particular in connection to its role in managing runoff, is called crown. Supraelevation. A straight highway segment is typically designed with a normal crown for the purpose of providing sufficient drainage of water off the surface of the highway. The term normal crown is used to describe a type of cross slope and the percentage of the slope. Cross slope can be defined in percent percent or decimal form, m per m. For example, a 2% cross slope represents a change in transverse elevation of 0.006 meters for each 0.3048 meters of pavement width. Normal crown has a rooftop shape that peaks in the center of the roadway and falls away from the center line at a typical rate of 2%. This means that for a highway with 3.6 meters lanes, the edge of the roadway will be 0.0732 meters below the elevation of the center line. Most drivers do not notice this amount of cross slope, and this cross slope does not typically affect the ride quality of the vehicle. However, the normal crown is essential for reducing the likelihood of hydroplaning by directing water off of the travel way. This figure presents the typical implementation of normal crown and the cross-section view, as would be experienced by a driver traveling along the highway e, the typical structure of a modern road. A pavement consists of layers or courses, in general, as shown below the functions of each of these layers are. 1. Surface, or wearing, course. This is the topmost layer, its function is to provide a smooth, strong, abrasion-resistant and reasonably impervious course. Since it is directly in contact with the vehicle tires, it has to resist the imposed wheel loads and transmit them safely to the layer below. The material may be granular, bituminous or cement concrete, depending upon the nature of the construction. 2. Base course. This is immediately below the surface course, and its function is to distribute the stresses transmitted through the surface course evenly onto the layers below. Invariably, it consists of granular or bituminous material and acts as a structural part of the pavement. 3. Sub-base course. This comes just below the base course and provides additional help to the courses above it in distributing the loads. It also helps in preventing soil grains of the subgrade from intruding into the base course above and counteracts frost action, if any. It may consist of stabilized soil or soil aggregate mixes, which facilitate drainage of free water from the pavement. 4. Subgrade. It is the compacted natural soil immediately below the pavement layers, this act as a foundation for the highway. The top surface of the subgrade is called a formation level. Depending upon the alignment and the nature of the terrain, a roadway may be constructed over an embankment or a cutting, or at or nearly at the natural ground level. The formation level, therefore, has to be properly decided to suit these conditions. 4. Earthworks construction. To effectively construct the road to the required elevation and height, as per the design specifications, the soil has to be carefully laid in an engineered process to achieve that required level. Soil to be used on the pavement construction has to meet the required physical and chemical requirements. These properties are normally determined by testing the soil samples taken from the proposed quarries where the soil material will be taken for construction. For engineers to economize the construction of the pavement, the location of the soil has to be carefully chosen to ensure the volume of the earth where it is excavated should balance where it is transferred to be filled on the road. Road engineers specify a mass hall diagram to efficiently determine such locations and detail them on the construction drawings to streamline the process. Earthworks processing involves mixing the soil with water and compacting it to the required compaction index. The minimum amount of loose soil that can be spread for processing mixing and compaction is 100 mm. The right amount of water has to be added to the soil and the recommended compaction done to achieve the required soil consolidation that will prevent excessive settlement below the road level once the construction is complete. The test done by engineers to determine if the required compaction is achieved is called the Proctor test. This test can be administered using many methods but the most common one used due to its rapidness is a densimeter. A nuclear moisture slash density gauge is frequently used on road projects. This process usually prolongs the road construction process, and most construction contractors are required to come up with a construction schedule that permits nightwork shifts to be able to meet the construction completion timelines. 5. The final road layer and finishes. The material that most people are familiar with is the black material referred to as the tamarack as a layman's term usually visible on the road. The black substance is actually a mixture of several materials collectively referred to as asphalt. 
When the base layer of a road is completed, the final layer is the surfacing as it is the visible surface of the road. The road surfacing layer has to be durable, strong, rough and waterproof. All these qualities are exhibited by asphalt concrete which is carefully engineered in the materials lab to meet these qualities and minimize wear and tear of the road depending on the class of the road that is being constructed. A paver is a special type of truck that is used to lay the asphalt material. After the wearing course is laid, the road finishes are completed including road markings, road signage, the road curbs, lighting, final finishes on the drainage, tolling locations, and guardrails were required. Subscribe to channel. Subscribe to channel.